Today on our 2007 motorhome with the Ford F53 chassis, we're going to be installing Airlift's Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL57140. And this is what our airbags are going to look like when they're installed. You'll get one for both the driver's side and passenger side. It's going to mount between the frame of your vehicle and your front suspension here on your front axle. Here you can see our suspension with no air helper springs going over various terrains. And now you can see our suspension with our airbags installed, and now you'll notice that it's much more stable. There's not as much oscillation between our suspension and our frame, and overall, it's just a smoother ride. These air springs are gonna provide you with up to 5,000 pounds of load leveling support. This will reduce strain on your suspension and both improve safety and ride quality. This allows you to level out an uneven load, so if it's tilting to one side or to the front or the rear, you can adjust this with these air helper springs. One of the benefits of having a level ride is that it improves steering and braking performance because it keeps your suspension geometry in correct plane. It's also gonna decrease tire wear by making sure that the alignment is correct. This helps keep your tires level and going down the road straight so they don't scrub or rub on the road. You can also use it to help maintain proper headlight aiming because if you're loaded too far in the rear, the front's gonna lift up and your headlights are gonna point up towards the sky. If you're loaded too much in the front, it's gonna sag down in the front, aiming them towards the ground. This way you can maintain that levelness and return those straight and have a nice, safe ride at night. The airbags themselves have Airlift's exclusive upper and lower roll plates. These are constructed of steel and will help increase the load capacity of the air springs, protecting the springs from damage and extending the life of the air spring suspension. The airbags are constructed of two-ply fabric reinforced rubber, and the end caps are made of a high strength nylon, which is lighter, stronger, and more corrosion resistant than steel. You can adjust the air pressure between 5 and 100 PSI to get the perfect level ride. It comes with all the hardware you'll need to get it installed, including the air lines and fittings. You'll receive two manual air valves, so you can adjust both the right and left side. And our customer here has opted to install airbags for both the front and the rear for complete suspension load leveling control. We'll begin our installation under the front of the vehicle. We're on our driver's side here. You want to verify if you have a jounce bumper. If you have one installed on yours, you're going to need to remove it. We're going to remove it using a half inch socket. And we'll do the same thing on the other side as well. We'll now prepare our airbags. We'll start by installing our air fitting into the airbag. That'll just thread into the hole here. You'll know you have the right side because there'll be three holes on this side. The other side only has two holes. You want to put it on the hole that's towards the outside. We'll then tighten that down using a 7 16 wrench. You want to make sure that you've got at least a couple threads of sealant threaded down inside. That'll ensure you won't have any leaks. Now we'll install our top mount. That'll just sit into place there. We'll use the shorter bolts that come with it. Put on a lock washer followed by a flat washer. We're gonna thread one into each of those holes. We just want them to be hand tight for now as we wanna be able to adjust it once we get it into position. And we'll do the same thing with our other airbag. Now we'll install our bottom bracket and this is gonna be oriented depending on which side. So now that we've got each of our airbags like this, our driver's side will have this facing towards the outside as this will butt up against the outside of the frame and we'll want this bracket with the square holes facing towards the rear. If you're doing your passenger side, it'll be just like this, as we want this towards the outside of the frame. So we're gonna be installing our driver's side now, so we'll have it oriented like this. So we'll flip it over, and we're going to be using the slotted holes that are on the same side of our air fitting. We're gonna use the same hardware that we did on the top bracket that includes the bolt, lock washer, and flat washer, and thread it into those holes. Once we've got those started, we are gonna tighten these all the way down. You wanna take your bracket and push it all the way so that we've got it as close to center as possible. So we've got our bolts all the way up against the inside of the slots. We'll then tighten those down with a 9 16th socket. and then we'll torque them to the specifications found in your instructions. The easiest way to do this would be to put your bracket in a vise. If you don't have a vise, you can support it between your legs and then torque it down. We'll 
We'll now position our airbag above our leaf spring with the lower bracket on each side of the leaf spring U-bolt. Slide it all the way in. We'll take the long carriage bolts that come in the kit, slide them down through the back side of our lower bracket. Then on the bottom, we're gonna place our lower bracket. This will slide on to each of our carriage bolts. Once you've got that slid into place, on each carriage bolt, you're gonna place one of the medium-sized washers, followed by one of the locking nuts. We'll then tighten those down with a 916 socket. You wanna go back and forth to make sure you tighten them down evenly. You may need to hold the top of the bolt down to keep it in place. Then torque them to the specifications found in your instructions. We'll now need to drill out our upper bracket mounting hole. Now there are two slots here in our upper bracket, but it's only held into place using one bolt. And you can put this in either of these slots. So whichever one's easier for you to get to is the one I would put it in. It's gonna be drilled to a half inch size. What I like to do is start by marking the hole I'm going to drill with my half inch drill bit. I wanna put it kinda of towards the top of the slot. You don't wanna go all the way up because it is slotted for a reason. And we're just gonna mark. We're not gonna drill out that marked spot using a quarter inch drill bit. We can then step it up to that half inch size. Then I wanna hold your airbag up until it's nice and square with the side of your frame and tighten down those bolts we left these earlier. This way we know that the hole in our frame is gonna line up with our bracket and that our bracket's gonna be nice and square after we tighten it all down. So then pull the airbag out and torque your bolt to the specifications in your instructions. We'll now take the large bolt that comes in the kit, slide on a lock washer, followed by a flat washer. We'll slide that from the outside of the frame through our bracket and secure it on the other side with a nut. We'll then tighten this down using a three quarter inch socket and wrench. We'll then go back and torque it to the specifications found in our instructions. And now with this side fully installed, we'll repeat the exact same procedures to install the one on the other side. Now all we need to do is connect our air hose to our airbags and then route it to wherever mounting location you want it on your vehicle. Typically you'd mount this towards the front in your front compartment. Our customer requested to have his mounted at the rear of the vehicle as he already has rear airbags installed and he wants the fittings mounted right next to it. Now you are gonna see some red airline tubing here. Now this doesn't come with the kit. We needed additional airline tubing to meet our customer's request. If you want to mount yours in a location that's gonna require more airline tubing, you can fix them up here at eTrailer.com. And now you do get around 15 feet with your airbag kit. However, for our situation here, it wasn't going to be enough. In order to connect our new airline tubing to the tubing that comes in our airline kit, you're gonna need some unions, which you can also pick up here at eTrailer.com with part number F3079-1. We'll now plug our airline into our airbag. Now, if you're routing it from the airbag up, you just plug in the end that you have. We're gonna to need to cut ours to the appropriate length. So you can use a pair of tubing cutters. We're using a pair of hose cutters just to make sure we get a nice clean square cut. That's important to make sure it seals properly. The airline that comes with your kit is a solid piece that has fittings on each end. So you are gonna to need to cut it in half in order to be able to plug one end into each airbag. And this simply plugs right into our fitting just plug it in. I like to push in and out just to make sure that it's fully seated. You'll do the same thing with your other airbag. You can then route the lines to wherever you'd like them to be mounted. It may be necessary for you to drill holes. We had to drill some holes on ours and we used a 9 30 seconds drill bit to get those holes drilled. So as you can see here we routed our tubing down along the driver's side frame following the wiring that already was pre-existing. We zip tied it along that wiring as we went down the frame and followed it all the way down to our rearmost compartment on the driver's side. And now here over our rear wheel, 
is where our new airline tubing met up with the tubing that comes in our kit. You can see the union here. This connects just like the fitting located on our airbag. One end just pushes in until it seats and the other end does the exact same thing. This will create an airtight seal conjoining the two pieces together. And the rest of the black airline tubing from our union just continued on down the frame rail until we got into our rear compartment here. That's where we drilled our holes and mounted our fittings. For your fittings, you'll want to put a nut on each one, followed by a star washer. You'll slide that through the hole that you drilled. And on the opposite side, we'll place a rubber washer, followed by a flat washer and another nut. You can then thread on your caps if you'd like, although we do need to place some air in our airbag system. We've gone ahead and labeled them since he did already have some pre-existing fittings, so he knows which one is the new fittings. These labels do not come with your kit, as typically you won't have ones right next to it. But all of the hardware to get these fittings mounted does come with our kit. We're now going to air both of them up to about 35 PSI and then check for leaks. It doesn't take long to hit 35, so do it in short spurts. And then to check for leaks, we're going to spray all of our fittings and connection points with some soapy water. If you see the presence of bubbles, that indicates you have a leak and you may need to tighten down or repair your fitting. We have no issues here, so we're going to move on to our fittings up at our airbags as well as the union along the way. And finally, we'll check our airbags. And since there's no bubbles present there either, our system is leak free. We're now ready to go on our first test drive. And that completes our installation of Airlift's Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs on our 2007 motorhome with a Ford F53 chassis.